And we're back. Max effort bench day again. And this morning, this afternoon, on the way to the gym, I was thinking this is the first max effort bench session that I'm more excited for than I am nervous for. And then like, as soon as I get in the gym, as soon as I start warming up, as soon as I can start to tell that the pec is still a little bit different, it's like the nerves come right back and I'm like, I got a bench today and still am excited, but definitely on the nervous side. Like, it's funny because at home through the day doing anything but being in the gym, I couldn't even tell that there was anything wrong right now. And I don't think about it at all through the day. And the gym is the only place that I really am thinking about it. And like even on squats and deadlifts now, I, I don't, it's not in my head at all on anything lower body. It's not in my head at all on any sort of accessory, but it is clearly still in my head on bench. And I know that the fact that it is no longer in my head on anything else, I've just got to keep on building that trust and keep on showing myself that I can do it. And eventually it's going to catch back on. And I think we're going to go back to floor press. Last time I floor pressed was, I don't even know how many weeks ago now, but last time I floor pressed went pretty decently. Last time around the axle, today I'm just going to run a straight bar just because that axle is a biatch. Is that too much of a swear for the YouTube algorithm this early on? I don't know. I tried to make it more PG friendly. Maybe I'll beep it, maybe I won't, but gonna run straight bar floor press. Last time with the axle made it up to 380. So I got that in mind and like, if I can beat that, absolutely will take it. If things feel weird, I'm gonna play it on the smart side just because with the pec, it ain't worth being stupid right now. So let's get rolling. Nicest part of the barbell is that it's got knurling marks so I know where the hell my grip is set the axle I pressed on last week or the other week didn't for reference and I'll raise the J's up Feels pretty freaking good so far. And I guess like I am comparing it to how that giant axle felt the last time I ran floor press. Triceps are a little bit sore from the incline GMs on Tuesday still, but I mean, that's part of training is like, you're gonna have shit that's sore and you just gotta deal with it. And what I wanted to bring up is like, if you're floor pressing, the most important part of a floor press is the settle onto the floor with the triceps. I'm gonna do my best to make sure that I don't lose that. Cause it's like the floor press is almost like the box squat of the upper body where we're unloading while staying tight and then driving from that bit of an unload and if we can drive that bit of an unload we're going to be so much stronger when we're able to load into ourselves and keep all that tension and blast off and for me especially being a thicker lifter where floor press is pretty much full range for me i get such a huge freaking carryover and like usually if i can floor press something i'm good for another 10 percent on comp bench and like I'm not sure if that translation will still exist with the pec, but here's to hoping that it does. And my wrists are kind of feeling frail right now. So this is me trying to push up what I'm doing without wrist straps, just gradually. And that's enough for the no wraps. Ah. Need a little harder your delt spread on this one. Right. Oh, yeah. Pack felt pretty good there. I just didn't feel like 
my arms are really connected to my body, if that makes sense. So ran some rotator cuff isometrics each direction, ran some rear isometrics, just to try to kind of wake shit up a little bit, for lack of a better word, or at least like familiarize what it feels like to actually get the shit tight that I need to get tight. So let's get tighter, be a little bit more assertive through the unrack, take a little jump and see if we can make her feel better. That was better. I think 65, 85, and then 405 feels really good. Now YouTube's gonna see me not changing my own plates. <laughs> Fixing the shot. Darrell is hilarious. He's always like trying to be helpful and like load my bar, unload my bar, and just like, just to help. And I'm always like, no, I'm a grown up. Let me load my own freaking plates. But that one I am stoked with. Had way more assertive on the unrack, way tighter, way more connected feeling through the eccentric, which led to more confidence on the concentric. And like, that is the thing that, you know, going into a session nervous or being nervous about a session is like, you gotta take those nerves and use them and pivot it into confidence. And it's like, I'm nervous because I know what it means. I'm nervous because I'm taking it seriously, but I'm not nervous because I doubt myself. I just want to make sure that I bring it. And it's like that, fear of not bringing it almost leads it to be easier to bring it, if that makes sense. I don't pretend it made sense, so yeah. Okay, assertive eccentric to the bar, big freaking lap pull. Let's go. That didn't make sense, assertive eccentric to the bar, assertive eccentric, big pull to the bar. Okay, that made sense. <laughs> There we go. Right. Woo! 385 on the bar and the nerves are back. Good nerves though. Like the, I'm excited to do this kind of nerves, but also still terrified because this is the most I've taken raw without board or anything, foam roller, slingshot since the surgery. So let's have fun. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> let's go. That's, that's, oh, oh yeah. There we there go. We go. Yep. <sighs> We're going for. I just had to slow it down to really make sure I stayed in my lats. It felt way fucking better. That was fun. Yeah, that felt freaking good to get the 405 monkey off my back. And like, I know floor press isn't a bench press, but if I can do it on a floor press, I know that I can do it on a bench press. And it is so freaking just, relieving to know that everything that I went through the last five months is going to be worth it. And almost forgot that I did jam presses on Tuesday and like I got on the floor to do jam presses. Then I remembered that I'm switching things up because part of the reason I wanted to run the jams Tuesday is so that I could run dumbbells before jam, before triceps on this day and start pushing the pack a little bit harder on the dumbbell presses rather than just going with a straight up therapeutic type intent. Because like right now it's not so much that like the pack needs to feel better as much as it just needs to get stronger again, which is again, really, really, really freaking cool. So dumbbells, let's go. I should have just turned the bench around like weeks ago because it's so much better lighting.
Yeah, that feels good. Hundos. It is recording, right? Yeah, it's recording. Okay, we're good. Finally, getting to be a grown up and get dumbbells out from under the rack, which is an inconvenience as much as it is exciting. One twenties, yeah. One twenties are a little loosey goosey, so <laughs> hopefully, don't die. My shirt's, my belly's showing. Thank you. It's like the internet already knows I'm fat, but I don't know I'm that fat. Anyways, gave the old balls a tug and straight to 70s on rollings. Belly check. <laughs> Gotta tuck my shirt in. Eighties. <sighs> Fucking gonna get Mirko. So Mirko's been running 44 kilos. These are 90s, so not quite there, but he also has two pecs, so that's cheating. sloppy but just trying to bully my elbows back into shape and like 2017 when I was down at elite Dave bullied me about how shitty my triceps were and then he proceeded to bully me with rolling legs and that was what got my bench moving way back in the day so if they're not there again might as well just keep rolling on them and rolling on them yeah. rolling on the rolling dumbbell extensions rolling. but yeah gonna get these strong again <laughs> Max effort, orb, pondering, seeing the future, big triceps. Let's go. Boom. <sighs> 
Breaking my own rules here and put the ball in the pull down just because I actually want to make sure that I can't push him super hard and I might actually end up taking the ball off because I don't know if I can hold on to that right now. Oh god. This is terrifying. I feel like this is actually going to be really good for both the pec and the shoulder because the amount that I have to like squeeze in as I'm pulling. I might be smarter than I think I am. <sighs> wow. That was so much subscap. I put chalk on and I think it made it worse. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <sighs> that is atrocious. This is so hard on so many things that I like didn't even know could be made this hard. That's what she said. <sighs> Probably not a good variation if you actually want to train lots, but wow, that internal rotation. Oh my goodness. Huh? <sighs> Yep. I just don't understand Gotta give sixties a run. And the secret to making heavy curls not stupid is to try to push the elbow down as you're curling. And that way, even if you do have some degree of swing, you're still gonna catch a whole lot of bicep. <laughs> okay, 55s, 60s, little aggressive. Okay, let's see if I can make this less stupid. Get in frame. If you guys are wondering, left arm is the one that I just had the pec surgery on, but when I was a kid, I had long head of bicep ripped off and like it stayed ripped off for years. And instead of like attaching it back where it belonged, they kind of just like tied it into the head of the short head. So I got like a hole up here where bicep long head kind of should be. And like that makes curls always a little bit weird on the right side. And that's part of the reason why I haven't pushed them too hard historically in my career because I've always felt weird, but if I don't push them because they feel weird, they're never gonna not feel weird. So, pushing them. <sighs> Figured I'd try something a little more specific to the bottom end of the bench. Doesn't quite feel entirely like I wanted it to, but still getting a pump. Still getting a squeeze. Doesn't feel like anything's gonna rip off. Win, win, win. Whew. I'm gonna roll the sleeve so I can peep the gun in the monitor. <sighs> the disadvantage of looking at my arm in the monitor is the monitor is really small, so it makes the already small arm look even smaller. But maybe that's more motivation to not push out on reps. <sighs> And 
more of these. Just a nice little pre-squat hip primer. Get used to pulling into the hole. And like, this is the sensation that I'm trying to replicate in the bottom of the squat. Like this, when I say pull, like this is what I'm talking about. And creating tension through the hip flexor is going to let you have so much more overall tension in the glutes, in the adductors, which is going to help you squat more. Like it's gonna be a little bit counterintuitive because you think like if the hip flexors are working, the glutes won't be able to work as hard. But if we have the hip flexors working just a little bit, it's gonna set the glutes up to work so much freaking better. So don't ignore hip flexor training. <sighs> Getting better at the foot change as I almost die. That was still like smoother than some of them. Oh no. was having so much fun in accessories. I was like, what did I even do today? What the hell do I even talk about? And like, that's kind of like why I love trading the style because accessories are always an opportunity to just have a freaking good time and dig into some reps and just find that connection and find that almost meditative place. Cause like the void you go into for a main lift is awesome, but it's not the same as the one that you need to be in on an accessory because the focus is so, so, so different. And like when I am under a max squat, a max bench, a max deadlift, like my focus is more just on the bar. Like I'm focused on moving the bar, right? Whereas on accessory, I'm more focused internally and it it's more, I don't want to say therapeutic in a sense, but it is like closer to what I could describe as meditation. It's closer to just like putting myself into a different zone than max effort. I don't know if I'm making sense right now, but basically the point I'm trying to make is accessories are fun. And if you push accessories hard, they can be very fun. If you push accessories hard, they're going to make you very strong, especially if you're doing it with good intent. So very stoked with the day, very stoked to put 405 on a close to real bench variation again and and then we're rolling we're rolling and like at this point we are 10 weeks out from the meet and i'm starting to think like i could string together a pr total nine months after a pack reattachment and obviously again i don't want to put pressure on myself i'm not trying to say that i have to but i'm going to give myself the best possible chance that i can at it and if i do that Either way, it's going to be a pretty freaking cool day, and I am getting more and more excited for this meet the closer I get. Also more nervous, but the nerves go hand-in-hand -hand with excitement. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your night. Appreciate the hell out of all of you, especially the ones who comment and click like. You guys are even more awesome than the guys that just watch. Not that I don't like the guys that just watch, but, you know, that like button, it ain't hard to reach. So pretty please.